If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to calculate the average power of the elevator. So let's take a look at an equation that we could use to calculate that average power. And so according to that equation, we know that the average power will equal the force exerted by the elevator motor multiplied by the average velocity of this elevator. It's important to understand that since the question is asking for the average power of the elevator motor, then when it comes time to plug in the force, we have to use the force that the elevator motor itself is exerting. And then again, we'll multiply by the average velocity. So why don't we make it our first goal to find the average force that the elevator motor is exerting. And to do that, we need to draw a free body diagram of this elevator. Now, of course, we know that one of the forces acting on the elevator is the gravitational force, which points straight downward and has a value of mg. And then there must be an upward force that's causing this elevator to move upward. And that is going to be the force exerted by the motor, which we can call Fm. And according to Newton's second law, we know that the net force that's acting on the elevator must equal its mass times its acceleration. Looking at the free body diagram, we can see that we have an upward force, which we can call positive, and a downward force, which is negative. So when we add them together, we're going to have positive Fm minus mg is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And since we want to know the force that the motor exerts, we can solve for Fm by adding mg over to the right-hand side. And then if we wish, on the right-hand side, since we have mass in both terms, we can factor that out. And so we're going to have mass multiplied by acceleration plus g. Now g is 9.8. The mass of the elevator was given as 650 kilograms. We don't have the acceleration of the elevator. So in fact, we have to step aside and find that acceleration. Now, of course, to calculate an acceleration, what we need is a change in velocity divided by the time. Change in velocity would be the final velocity minus the initial velocity. The final velocity is stated to be 1.75 meters per second. And then the initial velocity is actually going to be zero meters per second because it's starting from rest. We can divide by the time interval of three seconds and this is going to give us the acceleration. And when we do that, we get about 0.583 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of the elevator. We can plug that in for A here along with 9.8 for G and then the mass of the elevator. And when we plug this into our calculators, we should get a value of approximately 6.75 times 10 to the power of 3. And then, of course, the standard unit of force is in newtons. So this is the force that the motor is exerting on the elevator. That's what we were looking for in our power equation. We next need to figure out the average velocity. So perhaps we can come off on the side and do that. We know that average velocity is simply the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2. And so we take the final velocity of 1.75 meters per second we can add it to the initial velocity of zero and then divide that by two. And when we compute that, we get 0.875 meters per second for the average velocity. So we now have the average velocity. We have the force that the motor is exerting on the elevator. Let's go and plug those into our power equation now. And when you multiply those values, you should get about 5.91 times 10 to the power of three. And then the standard unit of power is going to be in watts. So this would be the correct answer if the question wanted the unit of power in watts. Sometimes questions want the unit in horsepower. And we know that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. That might have been stated in your physics textbook. You could look that up in this chapter. And so we can perform this conversion. The watts will cancel out. And we end up with 7.92 horsepower. So this is the correct answer in horsepower, and then in watts again, it was this value right here. Now on to part B, and we can refer back to our free body diagram showing the forces acting on the elevator. In part B, the question notes that there is constant speed. And of course, when there is constant speed, that means the acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared. So we can take a look at Newton's second law once again, which tells us that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. We once again have the positive force of the motor and the negative gravitational force. So we would have Fm minus mg. And that's gonna equal the mass times the acceleration. As just noted, the acceleration is actually zero. And of course, mass times zero is zero. So we can actually make the right-hand side zero. We can solve for Fm by just adding mg over to the other side. 
And so this turns out to be the force exerted by the motor on the elevator. We can come over to the power equation. We can plug that force in. And then the average velocity would actually just be the 1.75 meters per second. Remember, average velocity was equal to the final plus the initial divided by 2. But if it's moving at a constant speed, that means the final and the initial are both 1.75. So if we add them together and then divide by 2, we of course still get 1.75. So we'll plug in 1.75 meters per second for the average velocity. We can fill in the mass of 650 kilograms. We have g, which is 9.8, and then that average velocity. And then we'll pick up our calculators and multiply these three numbers out. And when we do that, we get 1.11 times 10 to the fourth. That, again, is in watts. If we need to convert it into horsepower, we can say 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watts. That way the watts cancel out. And we would end up with about 14.9 horsepower. So there's the correct answer to Part B in horsepower, and then this is the correct answer in watts. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up, please, and then also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question as long as it's from a standard physics or other subject textbook, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it online.